is Late Edition News at 10 with Ann Gownley. Sports with Eric DiBerardinis. And meteorologist Joe Garbacci. The city of Wilkes-Barre is facing a federal lawsuit over an ordinance that was passed and first implemented over a year ago. Plus, the now suspended solicitor for Hazel Township is speaking out and says the money owed to the township has been returned in full. And tonight, it's our top story. Good evening. This is WYLN's Late Edition, Greater Hazelton's only local news broadcast for Thursday, January 22, 2015. I'm Ann Gownley. WYLN reported to you last night that Hazel Township solicitor Charles Pedry was suspended over missing money. According to a resolution given to WYLN from acting solicitor attorney Pasco Shivo, the supervisors had repeatedly requested that Pedri pay just over $105,000 of escrow money to Hazel Spindle LLC. The supervisors then discovered the money was missing. In a press release given to us today, Pedri said that the issue stemmed from a misunderstanding as well as errors within his office. He regrets that the errors placed the Hazel Township supervisors in a difficult position. According to Pedri, the errors have been rectified and the money in question has been repaid in full. No Hazel Township taxpayer funds were affected by this matter. Hazelton Mayor Joe Yanuzzi and Council President Jack Mundy, along with attorney for the IIRA case Chris Kobach, were in Harrisburg yesterday and attempted to reach a settlement over millions of dollars in legal fees related to the IIRA case. Tonight, our Gary Perna has details on where the case stands today. The city of Hazleton is no closer to reaching a settlement in the Illegal Immigration Relief Act. Yesterday, Hazleton City Mayor Joe Yanuzzi, Council President Jack Bundy, and Attorney Chris Kobach, who represent the city in this case, were in Harrisburg yesterday trying to negotiate a settlement of $2.8 million in legal fees that the ACLU and a Philadelphia law firm are seeking. Today, WYLN spoke with Mayor Yanuzzi, who said the judge listened to both sides in the case. However, he could not give us specific details in the case, but he could tell us this. We both negotiated for hours and could not come to a conclusion, so we ended negotiations. And now, Judge Carlson will have to uh, return it to Judge Munley, who will now make a decision on what the uh, fees would be. Yanuzi said it could be a few weeks before a federal magistrate reports back to senior judge James Munley. First, he's going to report, uh, give a report to Judge Munley, which might take a week or two, and then another week or two or so, Judge Munley will ask for briefs from each party, saying, you know, what's your side, what's your side, why do you want this kind of money, what, you know, and why can't you pay them or whatever it turns out to be but those briefs will go before him and then he'll he'll review them and might call the both parties in or might just make a decision from the briefs no agreement has been made yet he knows he says it's all in the hands of judge munley and he hopes that he makes a proper decision and they came in with bills totaling two million eight hundred thousand dollars so we looked at the bills and we had like five to seven attorneys that were all there with Chris Kobach and our insurance company and those kind of attorneys. They came in with 47 attorneys and they all had bills of thousands and thousands of dollars and, and uh, it went to $2.8 million. So we will not want to pay that. And we told them that off the bat. So uh, Munley's going to make a decision on what we, if we have to pay at all. Uh, I think he'll make us pay, but how much? That's the thing. Ann Hazelton for WYLN's Lead Edition. I'm Gary Perna. Thank you, Gary. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Wilkesbury, alleging that its ordinance is targeting rental properties. Today, a tenant and a landlord, along with an attorney with the ACLU, held a press conference regarding the lawsuit. It's been nearly two years since the city of Wilkesbury passed a one-strike ordinance. 
According to the city, the ordinance has become a useful and effective tool to the area. It allows city officials and law enforcement officers to close down properties found to have illegal activities being committed inside them. However, the American Civil Liberties Union is speaking out on behalf of tenants and landlords whose homes have been shut down by the city. The ACLU of Pennsylvania and the law firm of K&L Gates filed a federal civil rights lawsuit today against the city alleging that the city's one-strike ordinance violates the Constitution in multiple ways. The lawsuit seeks a declaration from the federal court that this law is unconstitutional uh, and an order prohibiting Wilkes-Barre from enforcing it and seeking damages on behalf of the people who have been injured by the city's enforcement of this ordinance. 54-year-old Tina Hall and her 17-year-old daughter lived in a home in Wilkes-Barre until police entered her home and discovered a firearm wrapped in plastic hidden in a bedroom. Hall says the gun belonged to her son and that she was unaware the gun was inside the home. Today, Hall sat down with legal director for the ACLU, attorney Vic Volchak, and explained what her family has been going through since being kicked out. This is two things that I've lived with the whole six months. Fear and worry as to where I'm going to go from night to night. Not knowing where I'm going, where I can stay. Then it's really, really hard. It's really hard on my 17-year-old daughter who had just found some stability. But the whole thing is just crazy because you feel fear when they come in there and tell you that you have to move. And you're still scared because you don't know what's going on. Adam Peters, a tenant in the city, also had his property shut down. And today he wanted the public to hear his side of the story. The pride that I took having a nice property was drastically shot down when I found out a unit on my property had police activity and was now being shut down. I had no information as to exactly what was happening, so I had my property manager go to the property. Once I had been informed of the day's events, I felt I was... Uh, I felt like I was the one being reprimanded for somebody else's wrongdoings. I did my due diligence as the property owner in finding tenants and keeping the property up to code, yet I have been penalized for somebody else's actions, and that's not right. A person's home, whether they live in it or own it, is one of their most prized and important possessions in life, and the law and the Constitution recognize that. Before the government can seize somebody's home, they've got to be able to demonstrate that there is a compelling reason uh, for seizing that home. They need to convince a judge beforehand, uh, and they've got to show that actually taking the home is proportional to whatever wrongdoing was done. This this ordinance by the city of Wilkes-Barre does none of those things, um, and for that reason, it's unconstitutional. This ordinance has caused uh, a lot of harm to a lot of innocent people, um, and it cannot be allowed to stand. Attorney Volchak says there are other communities that have this kind of ordinance implemented. We are aware that Scranton has one of these, but as far as we can tell, have not been enforcing it. Williamsport has it, and Dunmore has it. And the ACLU is looking to hear from any tenants or landlords who have been impacted by one of these ordinances. Um, and if we get those calls, those municipalities could be joining Wilkes-Barre uh, in federal court. WYLN also reached out to Wilkes-Barre's Mayor Tom Layton. However, he did not return our calls as of yet to talk with us about this federal lawsuit against the city. Residents in one Hazel Township community came out tonight to find out information on a proposed water line which is planned for their town. Our Julie Stefanovich was at tonight's meeting and has a story. The Hazel Township Supervisors held a special meeting tonight concerning the proposed water line extension into Stockton numbers 6 and 8. Residents received letters from the DEP this past summer stating that the unregulated water system used by the two towns contained bacteria and heavy metals. Many neighbors gathered at the Commons Building tonight to voice their concerns and ask questions from members of the Water Authority, Nittany Engineering, and the Supervisors. The fate of the project depends on getting the $1.6 million in funding from PennVest. Looking at the situation, you know, everybody involved, engineering, DEP, whatever, have determined that the best way to help correct that system is through the Hazleton City Authority. So um, we're going for the funding necessary. Uh, DEP has provided the engineering free of charge for the authority and the residents there and the townships. 
so we're hoping to get the engineering done, engineering done submit to Penvest, and get the funding necessary to provide a, a, a very much improved system over there. Many of the residents have already spent thousands of dollars out of their own pockets to put wells into their properties. This was one of the hot topics of discussion at tonight's meeting. We really, this is the first time we ran into that, so uh, I guess I'll get together with the supervisors and our solicitor and we'd probably have to take them on a case-by-case -case basis, but we'll have to check as far as funding goes too because from what I understand the funding says exactly when they come through with the line everybody must get off the system they are on. So I believe everything might have to get terminated, but we're going to be talking to the John Sinoski with the Water Authority to see if we could do anything else for them. The deadline to submit to PennVest is February 18th. A PennVest meeting is also scheduled for April 5th, at which time the parties involved in the project will find out what is being offered in the way of funding. In Hazel Township for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. The M&T Bank on Cold Street in Wilkes-Barre was robbed just before 2.30 Thursday afternoon. These pictures of the suspect show him wearing a purple hoodie, a scarf covering his face, and he was also wearing jeans. Police believe that the suspect is a male and say that he was armed with a gun. Anyone with information on this robbery or the suspect's whereabouts is asked to call Wilkes-Barre Police at 570-208-4200. As we told you first last night on Late Edition, Hazleton Police are investigating a robbery in the 300 block of West Broad Street. And just and it took place just after 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. The suspect is described as a white male, approximately 5 foot 9 to 5 foot 11 inches tall, weighing roughly 170 pounds with a medium build. At the time of the armed robbery, the male suspect was wearing a red hoodie or jacket. The suspect showed the store clerk a brown and black in color handgun in his waistband and demanded money and cigarettes. The suspect fled north towards West Spruce Street with an undetermined amount of cash and cigarettes. No one was injured during the robbery. Anyone with information is asked to call Hazleton Police immediately at 570-459-4940 or dial 911. A former Wilkes-Barre Township fire chief was sentenced today for stealing money from his own fire company. 51-year-old John McNavage will spend six months in prison and six months on house arrest after being sentenced today in federal court. Prosecutors said that he was responsible for stealing $45,000 from 2008 through 2011. U.S. District Judge Edwin Kozik ordered McNavage to start his sentence on February 10th. He must also pay $45,000 in restitution. Repairing tennis courts, paying for the removal of bad dirt, and accepting the letter of retirement for the superintendent. Top tonight's Hazleton Area School Board meeting. Our Gary Perna was there and has the latest. Tonight, the Hazleton Area School Board voted 6-3 to three to pay Lobar Incorporated $114,226.14 for removing bad dirt at the Maple Manor Complex. And the bottom line is, that you're exactly right, we had to pay the bill. And I, you know, over time, even though they wanted to show their, I don't want to say disgust, but their whatever for that kind of a bill, especially with all the money we had already spent, uh, the bottom line, once again, is we, we, we did vote to pay the bill because you have to do that. You have no choice there. Well, what is the bill? No bill has to be paid, and we proved that tonight with a couple. But, uh, you know, I said I wouldn't vote to go one penny over the contingency fund. The dirt's what, what took out 90% of the contingency fund, and once we went over, it didn't matter what the bill was going to be, that was it. So, uh, you know, I'm sure they're happy, but I just think it was a waste of money. How far over are we in this? It doesn't matter if it's a dime or, or, or $10,000. In the beginning, I said we're not going over. There's $800,000 put there, and when you spend almost over $600,000 of that on dirt, that's ridiculous. The board also approved American Tennis Courts Incorporated to repair six tennis courts at the district for a cost of $180,000. I believe it's since 1992 that it's probably needed that. If that's when the school opened, I guess they were all right at that point, but over the years, they just deteriorated to the point where something needed to be done. So in fairness to the kids that play tennis, just like with the other sports, uh, I'm glad that the board voted to do it. 
At tonight's meeting, Dr. Francis Antonelli's letter of retirement was accepted. The superintendent announced last week that he will be retiring at the end of the school year. Board members and former co-workers of Antonelli's had nothing but praise for the educator. It was, uh, like I set up at the, uh, at, at the front of the room before doing the board meeting, 44 years, which is two-thirds of the man's life in public education, which he dedicated to the students and, and, and certainly to his staff, too. I, I just believe he did a great job, and like I said before, too, they're going to be tough shoes to fill. And yet, having said that, you know, we're at a point now where that's what we're going to do. But that's going to be a long process, too, before we finally arrive at who's going to replace him. After 44 years in the district, he deserves to have the right to, to relax and enjoy himself. And I hope he has a long, long, healthy retirement. I mean, he's done a lot for the district. He's worked his way up through the ranks. And I don't think you're going to find many people who have 44 years of employment at one place. And he, he deserves happiness in his retirement and a long, healthy one. The district will be advertising the position that Antonelli has held for the past three and a half years. School board members say this will be a very hard position to fill, and they want to make sure they find the right person. As always, WYLN taped the entire meeting and will show it tomorrow at noon here and only here at WYLN. In Hazel Township, for WYLN's Lead Edition, I'm Gary Perna. As we told you last night on Late Edition, there will be a new addition to the North Schuylkill School District. The school board announced that the Cardinal Brennan campus will be added to the existing campus. The purchase was made possible due to the financial planning of business manager Robert Amos. Money will be used from the Capital Reserve Fund. Taxpayers will not see an increase due to the purchase. The district also wants to preserve the neighborhood and make more room for the students. There has been a lack of space on the existing campus and it needs a additional facilities to grow and excel in academics and athletics. The district also thanked the Diocese of Allentown for working with them to obtain the property. The expansion will serve the communities that make up the North Schuylkill area. A popular restaurant chain is scheduled to open up its doors in Wilkesbury. Texas Roadhouse will be replacing Lone Star on Kidder Street, which will be closing on Saturday. The company is based in Louisville, Kentucky, and has over 450 restaurants nationwide. It specializes in steaks, fresh baked bread, and homemade dishes. Texas Roadhouse will need to obtain permits in order to build at that location. It will also be in the vicinity of Longhorns, Outbacks, and Logan's. The Roadhouse will join a list of other businesses scheduled to open up in the area, including Five Guys and Chipotle Mexican Grill. The restaurant has plans to open up on Kidder Street in March of 2016. A special luncheon today by the United Way of Wyoming Valley to thank the community for its support. WYLN's Julie Stefanovich has the details. The United Way of Wyoming Valley announced its 2014 workplace campaign results at an appreciation luncheon at the Giganti Hotel and Conference Center in Wilkesbury this afternoon. In total, the organization raised $3,350,000, which exceeded the previous year's goal. We spoke with President and CEO of the United Way of Wyoming Valley, Bill Jones. Of course, all the money will, will stay locally and it will be used now uh, in our changing model to address the issues for children and families in our community. Uh, too many children are, are living in poverty and we, we've changed our focus and that money will be geared towards uh, lifting those uh, children and families uh, up and helping them with education, with income stability, with health issues so that uh, those children, we could improve the odds for those children and uh, those families in our community. The United Way shift community impact increased the workplace participation and internal help its participating agencies. The exciting part is that many of our current partner agencies have submitted proposals that have already moved on to the next round of investment discussions and decisions, as well as new agencies. The other exciting part about that process is that not only new agencies, but we see agencies coming together in partnerships to maximize the impact that the dollars that we raise will have in that investment in moving the needle on childhood poverty. The organization is currently reviewing proposals for funding opportunities in the upcoming year.
Training sessions have uh, already been conducted last week, and now agencies will be uh, submitting uh, a request for proposal that will target various areas of childhood poverty in the areas of income, education, and health. Those decisions and recommendations will be forthcoming in the next uh, several months, and then recommendations will be made to the board of directors, and announcements will be made prior to July 1st of this year. The first round of community impact grants are expected to be made in late May. Members of the United Way would also like to extend their appreciation to all of the local businesses and individuals who have made this campaign possible. To find out more about the organization, you can visit unitedwaywb.org. In Wilkesbury for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. And to find out more about the United Way of Wyoming Valley, you could tune in right here on WYLN tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Gary Perna has uh, the United Way as its guest on Topic A, so make sure you tune in 5 o'clock tomorrow. On January 31st, the second annual Count Country for a Cure will take place at the Freeland Community Center. According to organizer Tammy Martin, is a way for residents to come out and have a good time, all while raising money for local residents suffering from cancer. Tickets are just $35 in advance and you must be 21 years or older to attend. If you wish to just come and enjoy the bands, there is a $10 cover charge at the door. The event begins at 5 p.m. in the Freeland Event Center on Fern Street in the borough and lasts until midnight. Anyone wishing to purchase tickets for the event, this is the last weekend that they will be available. You may stop by the Community Bonds Tanning Salon on Center Street in Freeland on Friday from 4 until 7 p.m. or Saturday from noon until 3 p.m. If you are on able to purchase tickets during those times, you may call Tammy at 570-956-4940 or Amanda at 570-956-1040. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Many schools in our viewing area had a late start to the school day because of the winter weather that we experienced yesterday. But can we expect any more snow this weekend? Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbachek is standing by live outside in the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with the answer. Joe? Well, thank you very much, and there is going to be a, a chance of some snow in our forecast, but looking at the radar right now, past six hours, it's been dry, really not much going on. We had the snow around earlier, uh, and you know, it did cause some slick spots, and it gradually dissipated, and things started to improve, but like I said, there is a chance of some snow in our forecast. We're going to be looking at that as we go into our Saturday. I'll explain the complete seven-day forecast coming up after the break. All Care Home Care, the health care that you need in the comfort and privacy of your own home. At All Care Home Care, our caring and compassionate staff of skilled nurses, occupational speech, physical therapists, dietitian, social worker, and home health aides will give you the professional care you need. Call 459-3002. With All Care Home Care, you will feel so much better and be able to do so much more. Remember, it's still your choice. For your care, call us and we'll be there. Hey kids, I'm home. It's cold in here. Oh, it's not cold in here. It's warm in here. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn this down because i got to save money for tax preparation. On Staves, your tax partner, giving free advice year-round. 310 South Church Street in Hazleton. Call them at 570-861-8297. Don't stress, pay less. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcasted television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional air times. Only on WYLN TV 35, we're your local network. Why should you choose Penn State Hazleton? We have new scholarship money. There's no application fee. When you visit campus. Opportunities to do research. Students are scoring internships all over the country. You can start here and finish here. Or at another Penn State campus. We have fun. We have the lion. Penn State is ranked number one by corporate recruiters. We have the largest alumni network in the world. It's your time. Penn State. Penn State lives here. 
Check us out at psu.edu slash visit Hazleton. Enjoy the great outdoors at the Whitetail Preserve Shooting Ranges Trap, Skeet, and Sporting Place course. No waiting and no lines. First time shooting? Whitetail Preserve employs certified instructors to help you get the most out of your experience. Hungry? The restaurant at Whitetail has a great menu to satisfy and offers catering for all occasions. Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, approximately 13 miles west of Hazleton and just one hour from Allentown, Redding, and the Delaware Water Gap. 118 Boulevard Road, just off the Rockland Road, near Rockland, 384-2314. Well, we do have the chance of precipitation in our forecast as we go into the first part of our weekend, but tomorrow it's going to be fairly quiet across our region. Now, last night we did have some lingering snow showers and flurries, still a couple of slick spots early this morning, but then uh, conditions did start to improve, temperatures did start to rise. Uh, you know, not a bad day considering we are in... January heading into uh, February very soon. We all know exactly the extreme weather conditions that we can see across our area this time of year. And it does look like we're going to at least have the chance. And I'm saying a chance because things can change. And I'll explain in a little bit of at least some snow, possibly Saturday. Friday night going into Saturday. Live 35 Skycast Doppler. Nothing to show you from Wilkesbury through Scranton, Berwick, Bloomsburg. Hazleton out through the west. There's nothing showing up. It is dry. 20 degrees are lively high tire conditions outside our television station in Hazleton. And those winds, not much of a factor, generally coming in under 5 miles per hour. Our coordinated health almanac page for the day 31 and 20 to split in temperatures. Averages for this time of year, 34 and 27, record high and low, they still stand, 66 and 84, that was not the time to, to be outside, getting down to a record low of minus 11, 722-509, sunrise and sunset for tomorrow. So 20s this morning, and in daytime highs, as many areas actually did get above freezing. Temperature-wise right now, 27 in New Angola, 26 in Bloomsburg, and also 26 degrees in Danville. Satellites and radar, all is quiet across the northeast, but take a trip toward the south and west. Yeah, something's brewing. That's a storm system. That guy is aimed toward the northeast. You can see all the precipitation, the rain from Louisiana, Mississippi, heading into Alabama and Georgia, Tennessee. And the exact track of that is going to be crucial. In fact, latest indications are as you head further toward the north and east, even northern tier of PA could get away with not seeing anything on Saturday. I think at this point in time right now, the bulk of the precipitation should stay toward the south and east, but it still should give us enough to maybe shovel and plow. Could give us maybe one, two, three or so inches. And look at this on skycast precipitation and clouds. Boy, look at that sharp cutoff as we put that in motion and we'll continue to put it in motion. And what you'll be able to see is we're on that fine line, that, that northerly fringe of that storm system. It makes its way up to about here but again, if it pushes further toward the west, that means we get more snow. Further toward the south and east, we may get by with just some snow showers and practically nothing. Stay tuned for those updates. Above freezing for tomorrow in most areas, and as we go into our Saturday morning and in by the noontime hour on Saturday, temperatures for the most part should be near freezing. Season will be cold for tomorrow, quiet, really not much going on. All eyes basically are focused for a Friday night into Saturday, depending upon an exact track of the storm system, will depend upon if we get snow and how much snow we get. At this point, it looks like we'll get some. doesn't look like a whole lot at this time. Maybe even a little bit of a wintry mix because temperatures in most areas will be slightly above freezing. And then we get rid of that, and then maybe by early next week, it's going to be much colder. So yeah, that's going to be all snow if, in fact, we do have another storm system, which we might by Monday of next week. And look how cold it's going to get for the rest of that week. Evening Pennsylvania lottery numbers, the daily 832, the big four, 8225. And the Quinto numbers, 39500, and a cash five, 32125, 26, and 42. We'll have more late edition coming up after these commercial messages.
Third Base Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. Tune in every Sunday night on WYLN from 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. for hard-hitting, high-flying, non-stop action as only Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling High Voltage can bring you. That's Pennsylvania Premier Wrestling every Sunday night on WYLN. I'll see you in the ring. This week on Wellness to Physical Therapy, who's going to tell us about neuropathy? This is a condition that affects a large number of people, yep. a lot of seniors, yep. and it's something that's very difficult to treat. Tim is going to give you a natural, non-invasive option this on Wellness to Physical Therapy. During these changing times, is your insurance program up to date? I'm local Allstate agent Gary McNeilis. I invite you to come into our office or give us a call. We'll help you be sure that you have the proper coverage to take care of all your family's needs at a price you can afford. Now more than ever, you need to be in good hands to protect everything that's important to you. Our team of insurance professionals and I will be honored to serve you. Are you in good hands? If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. WYLN TV 35, first in live sports. Join Marty Burns, Joe Melfi, and the entire WYLN sports team as we bring you the best in live local sports. WYLN TV 35, the event, not just the highlights. Winter Sports on WYLN is brought to you by Lehigh Valley Health Network, Express Care, located in the Hazelton Shopping Center. Last week, MMI Prep Girls Basketball endured a 112-point defeat that have since received an outpouring of support. Tonight, the team comprised of just seven players, again hard at work, hosting Nanakoke. The Trojanettes take a 33-4 lead in the halftime, and here in the third, Chiquana Zendarski follows up her miss for the make. But the Lady Preppers always keep up the fight. The turnaround is good from Annika Fisk. Then, off the inbounds, Rachel Stanziola knocks it down from beyond the arc, and MMI getting some shots to fall in the second half. But the deficit too big to overcome. Other end, Kayla Alpiero steps in and hits nothing but nylon. Trojans, Trojanettes up by 31. Stanziola here a nice coast-to-coast -coast finish, but MMI prep falls short. 50-21 to 21 is your final. Tomorrow, WYLN will bring you live high school boys basketball action with Mahanoy area visiting Weatherly. The Golden Bears won the first matchup 67-35 to in December, but no, a lot can change in a month. They're starting to play a little bit better together. Uh, I've seen a couple box scores where they either won or the games are real close. So I definitely expect a tough game because even though we played them early on, it just seems like so long ago, and I know they have improved, and hopefully we have improved, because we're, we're, our goal is to get better each practice and to get better each game. We're looking at it like that, but playing a fun one of basketball, but playing team basketball, team defense is like we have, and just keeping up with that stuff. I never look at it that way. You can't underestimate any team, because at any night, anybody can show up. It's not like they're a bad team. They have good players that can score. Weatherly knows that despite their opponent replacing five starters and a legendary coach from last season's squad, Mahanoy remains tough to beat. What we expect from the area is the same. Uh, Scotty, he runs the same type of uh, offense and defense that Mickey ran when he was there. Uh, they have skilled players, are very fundamentally sound. They're going to come at you, play man-to-man -man defense, and, and run up and down the floor and pressure you all, all over the 94 feet. Uh, they play a very physical style game, and uh, we have to 
to counter back with our own toughness and we have to be fundamentally sound and we have to basically put our whole best foot forward for that game. Later in sports, we take you back in time to a prior matchup between Mahanoy and Weatherly, prepping you for tomorrow's broadcast. But next, and we'll be back with a recap of today's news. Well, I'll never forget it. One minute, we're talking about going to the movies, and the next, Maggie could barely speak. It was a stroke. I thought I was going to lose her. But I never saw doctors work so fast. Anyway, she's coming home tomorrow. I just hope she doesn't yell at me for killing all the plants. <laughs> Things move a little slower here in DSL, Bill. Slow pitch softball is big here. Really big. There's not a fast food restaurant in town. Zero. Get the most out of the internet. Get Service Electric High Speed Internet. Call Service Electric today to sign up. Ho, 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 ho. Slow down. Tourists. WYLN reported to you last night that Hazel Township solicitor Charles Pedry was suspended over missing money. According to a resolution given to WYLN from acting solicitor attorney Pasco Shivo, the supervisors had repeatedly requested that Pedry pay just over $105,000 of escrow money to Hazel Spindle LLC. The supervisors then discovered the money was missing. In a press release given to us today, Pedry stated that the issue stemmed from a misunderstanding as well as errors within his office. Office. He regrets that the errors placed the Hazel Township supervisors in a difficult position. According to Pedri, the errors have been rectified and the money in question has been repaid in full. No Hazel Township taxpayer funds were affected by this matter. Hazelton Mayor Joey Anuzi and Council President Jack Mundy, along with attorney for the IIRA case Chris Kobach, were in Harrisburg yesterday and attempted to reach a settlement over millions of dollars in legal fees related to the case. Tonight, our Gary Perna has details on where the case stands today. The city of Hazelton is no closer to reaching a settlement in the Illegal Immigration Relief Act. Yesterday, Hazleton City Mayor Joe Yanuzzi, Council President Jack Bundy, and Attorney Chris Kobach, who represent the city in this case, were in Harrisburg yesterday trying to negotiate a settlement of $2.8 million in legal fees that the ACLU and a Philadelphia law firm are seeking. Today, WYLN spoke with Mayor Yanuzzi, who said the judge listened to both sides in the case. However, he could not give us specific details in the case, but he could tell us this. We both negotiated for hours and could not come to a conclusion, so we ended negotiations. And now, Judge Carlson will have to uh, return it to Judge Munley, who will now make a decision on what the uh, fees would be. Yanuzi said it could be a few weeks before a federal magistrate reports back to senior judge James Munley. First, he's going to report, uh, give a report to Judge Munley, which might take a week or two, and then another week or two or so, Judge Munley will ask for briefs from each party, saying, you know, what's your side, what's your side, why do you want this kind of money, what, you know, and why can't you pay? or whatever it turns out to be, but those briefs will go before him and then he'll, he'll review them and might call the both parties in or might just make a decision from the briefs. No agreement has been made yet. Yanuzi says it's all in the hands of Judge Munley and he hopes that he makes a proper decision. And they came in with bills totaling $2,800,000. So we looked at the bills and we had like five to seven attorneys that were all there with Chris Kobach and our insurance company and those kind of attorneys. They came in with 
47 attorneys. And they all had bills of thousands and thousands of dollars. And, and uh, it went to $2.8 million. So we will not want to pay that. And we told them that off the bat. So uh, Munley's going to make a decision on what we, if we have to pay at all. Uh, I think he'll make us pay, but how much? That's the thing. Ann Hazelton for W Islands Late Edition. I'm Gary Perna. The American Civil Liberties Union has filed a federal lawsuit against the city of Wilkesbury, alleging that its ordinance is targeting rental properties. Today, a tenant and a landlord, along with an attorney with the ACLU of Pennsylvania, held a press conference regarding the lawsuit. It's been nearly two years since the city of Wilkesbury passed a one-strike ordinance. According to the city, the ordinance has become a useful and effective tool to the area. It allows city officials and law enforcement officers to close down properties found to have illegal activities being committed inside them. However, the American Civil Liberties Union is speaking out on behalf of tenants and landlords whose homes have been shut down by the city. The ACLU of Pennsylvania and the law firm of K&L Gates filed a federal civil rights lawsuit today against the city alleging that the city's one-strike ordinance violates the Constitution in multiple ways. The lawsuit seeks a declaration from the federal court that this law is unconstitutional uh, and an order prohibiting Wilkes-Barre from enforcing it and seeking damages on behalf of the people who have been injured by the city's enforcement of this ordinance. 54-year-old Tina Hall and her 17-year-old daughter lived in a home in Wilkes-Barre until police entered her home and discovered a firearm wrapped in plastic hidden in a bedroom. Hall says the gun belonged to her son and that she was unaware the gun was inside the home. Today, Hall sat down with legal director for the ACLU, attorney Vic Volchak, and explained what her family has been going through since being kicked out. It's the two things that I've lived with the whole six months. Fear and worry as to where I'm going to go from night to night. Not knowing where I'm going, where I can stay. Then it's really, really hard. It was really hard on my 17-year-old daughter who had just found some stability. But the whole thing is just crazy because you feel fear when they come in there and tell you that you have to move. And you're still scared because you don't know what's going on. Adam Peters, a tenant in the city, also had his property shut down. And today he wanted the public to hear his side of the story. The pride that I took having a nice property was drastically shot down when I found out a unit on my property had police activity and was now being shut down. I had no information as to exactly what was happening, so I had my property manager go to the property. Once I had been informed of the day's events, I felt I was... Uh, I felt like I was the one being reprimanded for somebody else's wrongdoings. I did my due diligence as a property owner in finding tenants and keeping the property up to code, yet I have been penalized for somebody else's actions, and that's not right. A person's home, whether they live in it or own it, is one of their most prized and important possessions in life, and the law and the Constitution recognize that. Before the government can seize somebody's home, they've got to be able to demonstrate that there is a compelling reason uh, for seizing that home. They need to convince a judge beforehand, uh, and they've got to show that actually taking the home is proportional to whatever wrongdoing was done. This this ordinance by the city of Wilkes-Barre does none of those things, um, and for that reason, it's unconstitutional. This ordinance has caused uh, a lot of harm to a lot of innocent people, um, and it cannot be allowed to stand. Attorney Volchak says there are other communities that have this kind of ordinance implemented. We are aware that Scranton has one of these, but as far as we can tell, have not been enforcing it. Williamsport has it, and Dunmore has it. And the ACLU is looking to hear from any tenants or landlords who have been impacted by one of these ordinances. Um, and if we get those calls, those municipalities could be joining Wilkes-Barre uh, in federal court. WYLN also reached out to Wilkes-Barre's Mayor Tom Layton. However, he did not return our calls as of yet to talk with us about this federal lawsuit against the city. Residents of one Hazel Township community came out tonight to find out information on a proposed water line which is planned for their town. Our Julie Stefanovich was at tonight's meeting and has the story. 
The Hazel Township Supervisors held a special meeting tonight concerning the proposed water line extension into Stockton numbers 6 and 8. Residents received letters from the DEP this past summer stating that the unregulated water system used by the two towns contained bacteria and heavy metals. Many neighbors gathered at the Commons building tonight to voice their concerns and ask questions from members of the Water Authority, Nittany Engineering, and the Supervisors. The fate of the project depends on getting the $1.6 million in funding from PennVest. Looking at the situation, you know, everybody involved, engineering, DEP, whatever, have determined that the best way to help correct that system is through the Hazleton City Authority. So um, we're going for the funding necessary. Uh, DEP has provided the engineering free of charge for the authority and the residents there and the township. So we're hoping to get the engineering done, engineering done submit to PennVest, and get the funding necessary to provide a, a, a very much improved system over there. Many of the residents have already spent thousands of dollars out of their own pockets to put wells into their properties. This was one of the hot topics of discussion at tonight's meeting. We really, this is the first time we ran into that, so uh, I guess I'll get together with the supervisors and our solicitor and we'd probably have to take them on a case-by-case -case basis, but we'll have to check as far as funding goes too because from what I understand the funding says exactly when they come through with the line, everybody must get off the system they are on. So I believe everything might have to get terminated, but we're going to be talking to the John Sinoski with the Water Authority to see if we could do anything else for them. The deadline to submit to PennVest is February 18th. A PennVest meeting is also scheduled for April 5th, at which time the parties involved in the project will find out what is being offered in the way of funding. In Hazel Township for WYLN's Late Edition, I'm Julie Stefanovich. And that is a look at tonight's top stories. Coming up next, Eric DiBerardinas is back with more sports here on Late Edition. But first, let's head back, back outside to the Bedrock Gardens Weather Center with Chief Meteorologist Joe Garbacek. Joe? Well, thank you very much, Anne. The stage is set for us to see the possibility of some precipitation as we head into the first part of the weekend right now. It's not too bad out. It is quite chilly, but we don't have to deal with much of the wind because the winds are relatively light. Statewide, things are going to good as well. Really nothing to show you. Live 35 Skycast Doppler, but that may change as we go into our Friday night and Saturday. I'll explain why with the complete seven-day forecast coming up in just a few. Athletes try talking themselves out of being hurt. I'm good, I'm good. Working past the pain because they want to keep on playing. Okay. I'm good. Coordinated Health understands. As the number one sports medicine team in the region, we get these champions back in the game with pro-level care. Yeah, I'm good. Because we make you better together. At Cuck's Turkey Farm, we are family owned and operated for over 45 years and we consistently strive to produce premium poultry. We offer the finest all natural country poultry, antibiotic free, all vegetarian fed with superior white meat yield and exceptional flavor. So we invite you to experience the unique natural taste of our poultry for your enjoyment and your health. Give us a call or stop in today. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric, Mr. Slim Ductless Heating and Cooling System. Mr. Slim Systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50 percent on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialists, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. We'll meet Steve Bruno. He's a bus driver, a winemaker, makes his own pasta too, and has found the perfect chiropractor in Dr. Don and Dr. Stacy. His story this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us.
we don't need hashtags or social media to have a throwback Thursday of our own. Tonight we take a look back at a previous matchup featuring the teams in our game of the week, Mahanoy and Weatherly. February 1st, 2013. This one inside Mahanoy's gym, which has since been renamed to honor coach Mickey Holland, who retired in 2014. First bucket of the game belonged to big man Tyler Cavantes, who the Wreckers would have trouble stopping all night. Here's a name you will hear from tomorrow, Luke Reiner. The number has changed, but his game has only improved. The long two is followed by the corner three as Reiner attempted to keep Weatherly in it. But another name you'll hear from tomorrow, Brian Miller followed up and Mahanoy would end up cruising 69 to 31 the final that night and the Golden Bears would go on to capture a district title that season. Luke Reiner and Brian Miller sophomores back then now their team's leading scorers as seniors. Again you can watch Mahanoy at Weatherly right here on WILN tomorrow beginning at 7:30. Know the pros. Deflategate rages on. New England Patriots head coach Bill Belichick said he didn't know anything about the footballs being deflated. And to ask Tom Brady, when asked, Tom Brady said that he didn't alter the footballs in any way. Situation still developing. And we now know the NBA All-Star starters. It will be Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, Anthony Davis, Blake Griffin, and Marc Gasol for the West and for the East. LeBron James, Carmelo Anthony, John Wall, Kyle Lowry, and Paul Gasol. Girls High School hoops in the scoreboards tonight. A reminder, Joe Garbacic is next with a look at your upcoming forecast. We're fast. Fast like a cable modem. Call Service Electric now and get the fastest internet in town. Plus, when you sign up today, you'll also get free installation. Experience the blazing speed of Service Electric high-speed internet service. Your internet will never be the same. Now, Hazel Park Spring Water is proud to announce that they are the official water of the WION Sports Crew and available for home delivery through JW Wargo Spring Water Delivery and JoJo's Beverage. Since 1915, the Chrysler family has been serving the area with quality meats. The tradition continues today with five generations at Hazel Park Quality Meats, 260 Washington Avenue, West Hazleton, and Reading Specialty Meats, located at 216 East 4th Street in Berwick. WYLNCA35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN, 1057 East 10th Street, Hazleton, PA, during normal business hours, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., Monday through Friday. If you haven't found the perfect fishing getaway, you haven't been to Captain's Cove. Located on Henderson Harbor in upstate New York, Captain's Cove offers a variety of accommodations to please just about anyone. The motel, also located on the harbor, offers a magnificent view. Enjoy free morning coffee, air-conditioned rooms, cable TV, and HBO. The cottage can accommodate up to eight people with three bedrooms, a complete kitchen, washer-dryer, two full baths, air conditioning, an outside grill, and picnic table. Call us today for rates and information at 1-800-824-FISH. Saturday, January 24th, and Sunday, January 25th, the Bowl Arena in West Hazleton will be hosting the African Missions Project Bowling Telethon. Cost is $10 per person and includes two games of bowling and shoes. For more information, visit AfricanMP.org or call 570-459-3037. 
Did you know over half a million children in the United States are in foster care and about 20,000 in Pennsylvania alone? Well, this week we'll be talking about the importance of fostering children. I'll be joined by two area advocates, State Representative Tara Tuho of the 116th and Attorney Lori Ogurkis, who is the founder of Brandon's Forever Home. It's all this week on The Storm, only on WYLN TV 35. Well, we should be in pretty good shape as we head through the overnight hours and as we head into tomorrow, really not expecting anything uh, to talk about weather related in terms of precipitation. But going into tomorrow night and as we go into our Saturday, that's when things could change across our region. But again, it is quiet throughout northeastern and central and even western Pennsylvania. We don't have to worry about really anything uh, through the overnight hours. We should be in pretty good shape. But one thing is, it is very cold outside. When you walk outside, we're at 20 degrees. Our live Lehigh tire conditions outside our station in Hazleton. And our may winds, not too much of a factor, generally under five miles per hour. So overall, you walk outside, it actually feels like the actual air temperature. You don't have to worry too much about a wind chill. But there is some very cold air throughout parts of the nation. It's only in the 20s, 21 degrees in Buffalo. It's at the freezing point in both Boston and New York City. Take a look at Texas, Amarillo, Texas. It's only 19 degrees right now. They're dealing with some very cold air, but continuing to be very mild way down in the south. Miami, Florida, those guys are just enjoying some very warm weather. Temperatures now still in the 70s. Up in the Wyoming Valley area from Nanticoke through Wilkesbury, Kingston and Lehman, your temperatures generally holding in the 20s. Again, the wind's really not much of a factor, generally coming in under 5 miles per hour. Satellites and radar, we've got a couple of clouds to deal with here and there, but we're also seeing some breaks in those clouds uh, from time to time, and we're going to start to see some of those clouds increase as we progress through tomorrow and as we head into tomorrow night. Watch skycast precipitation and clouds based upon this particular model, and what you're going to notice is that the next system is going to get very close toward the northeast. That cutoff point is going to be crucial because just to the north of it, really not much is going to go on. And further south, you'll have some precipitation. Right now, it doesn't look like it's going to be a whole lot across our area going into Friday night and Saturday. But again, a little bit of a different track in the storm system will and could give us more precipitation. And there you can see it, making its way from the south and west and making its way toward the north and east. And, and notice this model one just glazes the Hazleton area. That's about it. Toward the north and west of that, really nothing going on. Very light, if anything. But again, if this thing pushes further toward the west, that means we get a little bit more snow. So we're still keeping the threat of snow in the forecast. Not out of the question to miss us totally, but at this point in time, looks like it, it'll be uh, more of a nuisance type situation than anything. But of course, we know that can change as we head through tonight and of course, as we go into tomorrow. One thing for certain tomorrow, though, it's going to be quiet across our region. We won't have to really worry about any problems out there for traveling. And then all eyes are centered on this system, depending upon the exact track that it takes. It will depend upon how much snow um, or even a mixture of precipitation we will see. And again, still not out of the question. It could really miss the northeast part totally. But if you have plans to travel down, say, by Philadelphia, chances are it's not going to miss that region because that's, of course, further south and east. Here's a look at the extended forecast. Again, Friday night and Saturday could be looking at something coming into our region. And then it clears out of here later uh, Saturday and Saturday night. Sunday it looks quiet. May have to deal with yet another system that could give us some more snow as we go into our Monday with temperatures only in the 20s. Look how cold it's going to be as we go into our Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday teens for Tuesday. That's it. And some of those overnight lows, we're looking at temperatures in the single digits. So basically don't go outside Monday or Tuesday at night. Uh, yeah, by, oh, yeah, stay Three degrees? Three degrees at night? All right, you're going out in shorts <laughs> that night. <laughs> that night, that's three the degree, night. that's the night. Okay. I really, really think that's going to be the night. We sent him out in shorts and the flip flops. I'm not going to do it. I don't want to see him sick. He's a good guy. 
I think two weeks. Jeff. I think two weeks. I like the tie again, again Joe. Oh, well, oh, thank you. Oh, I like the tie. He's coordinating with that. We'll see what happens tomorrow. Will we we'll make see, it we, three? We didn't wear the same color this time. But I like your tie, too. We'll see if that's purple or not. Have a good night, everyone. Let's we'll be back about. here tomorrow night. Of course, at 5.30 for our Friday night newscast. We'll see you then.